one parent told me her, that her son who's diagnosed with autism keeps on eating so even after he's eaten the lunch he wants to eat you know like it's like the full day thing that there is always going to the kitchen wanting to eat something or the other and that is what i wanted to discuss about in today's video my name is reena singh i'm an occupational therapist and i've been supporting families for the last 24 years and i'm so happy to share my viewpoint on this subject here so you know um, everybody like you know wants to see i mean at least that's how i used to do when i started beginning i used to think oh it may have a primitive reflex integration base there oh it may be related to interoception oh it may be related to you know like i mean i remember working on only one thing at a time and what i want to talk about is that if a child is always putting th things into the mouth it's not just about an oral motor issue it's not uh, you know sometimes it's like oh everything is going into the mouth meaning the child is seeking input and the child wants something in the mouth and a lot of parents because you know they use that as a frame of reference they think give the child something to mouth on to so that or you know work on those oral motor massages or do some exercises in the mouth so that it gets desensitized and children stop eating all the time or eating literally that's what some parents do the other uh, uh, approach is that the child is putting something into their mouth and eating all the time it could be because the child is not understanding and not aware of the fullness that i my stomach is full you know we get that internal sensation that i am full or i am empty you know my stomach is empty i need to eat so that interoceptive awareness is not there so that is one way and then parents work around interoceptive awareness all right so one is about oral motor seeking one is about interoceptive awareness the third thing that parents commonly i mean I, i i i see you know what i'm trying to say is all the theories are correct but just thinking of one approach is not right it it does not help a lot of kids who have unintegrated sucking reflex rooting reflex which other you know sucking rooting mainly those even some kids who have fear paralysis reflex they have more sensitivity around the face so fpr that's fear paralysis reflex and more these are the also kids who would mouth on to things now if i think of oh this is a primitive reflex integration work okay let me just integrate the moro and fpr reflex just integrate the sucking reflex and then this would go away i don't think so you know so that is one more so what i said is the first thing it could be oral seeking oral motor interoception the third thing that parents uh, think is it could be because of as i said uh, unintegrated primitive reflexes and the fourth thing which is very common is anxiety you know i can't remember which author said that but living in a body that has a neurodiverse brain that has these sensory sensitivities is an anxiety it's a trauma in itself you know so there's a lot of anxiety that keeps happening and and i'm not here to blame parents not at all i'm just informing you so that you know you become more aware but you know many a times when we keep prompting our kids come on do fast eat come on come on come on, come on. okay okay you know like there's one you know the schedule is so full that there is this activity then this activity then this activity then this activity and then this activity and the day falls short and there's like so many things that need to be done for the child and we're constantly rushing them not letting them have that time where they can process and integrate whatever that they've learned or uh, you know so what i'm trying to communicate is as a child all of us i mean all of us need an adult who's available who's calm and um, who's calm and who's available that's what we want but if i have an adult who says in fact you know the other day my husband was like come on let's quickly eat our breakfast oh come on i have to quickly uh, you know get my tiffin oh i have to quickly go to office and i was like why are you using that word quickly because that gives me anxiety you know it makes me feel that i have to rush through things and then i was like imagine if we keep doing this to our kids come on let's do this and then as the child takes time and like come on come on come on you know there's a lot of prompt there's a lot of instructions so what i'm conveying is that the constantly eating something is not just because of one factor 
all of these things that I told you, it's like, you know, the pearl necklace that we have. Like, you know, there are so many pearls that contribute and they're all interlinked. You know, it's all interlinked. It could be an oral seeking thing, but the oral seeking may also be coming because the child is feeling anxious. The anxiety may be coming because the fear paralysis reflex, the moro reflex are unintegrated. It may also be because the sucking and the rooting reflex is present. It could be because most of the times, one more factor that I forgot to mention here is that the child is not able to uh, process the vestibular proprioceptive input into the body. So, one thing that we all need to remember is if I ever integrate a primitive reflex, I can't work on it in isolation. If I'm working on a primitive reflex, you know, a baby, when the primitive reflex gets integrated, it gets transformed into something mature. And for that something mature, the base is working on the postural system. Okay. It's like if I want uh, the child to have a better interoceptive sense, interoception is about having an understanding of what's happening in my body. I need to have that vestibular proprioceptive systems working together. So what is my point? What am I trying to convey? My point that I'm trying to convey is there are many factors, okay, not just one factor, which leads to eating all the time. And if I want to work on that, then I need to work on unintegrated primitive reflexes, not just that, but that I need to work on sensory intervention. I need to work on, uh, you know, what else did I tell you? I need to work on interoceptive awareness also. There is a whole way by which we work on it. <clears throat> then I also work upon the myself, you know, as a therapeutic agent. So if I am working with a child, am I talking slow? Am I talking too fast? Am I giving too many prompts? Am I giving too many instructions? Is my presence in my child's life causing the child to become more anxious and if there is more anxiety it will spill over and you will see that all, all the time eating increasing I mean I don't know if you've ever done that but you know when I have nothing to do and I'm on a break or vacation I'm like what are we eating for lunch okay what are we eating in the snacks what are we eating at night I'm only thinking of eating I'm not hungry so there is something called as emotional eating and when a child puts things into their mouth, it helps them to start feeling more calmer and start feeling more relaxed. And that's what, so the food is not serving the function of nutrition, but it is serving the function of uh, calming down the stress and anxiety. And that stress and anxiety can be calmed down in so many different ways. Yes, we know of deep pressure strategies. And I'm not saying giving just a ball pressure, but embedding that throughout the day. You know, like having a, an activity, maybe I have a Lycra swing at home and the child can go and sit in that Lycra and, you know, that Lycra holds and that kind of gives you that deep pressure. My point is having those activities dispersed throughout the day so that the child can use those strategies, not when the seeking or whatever goes high up. No, but it's available throughout the day. So maybe before a bath, there is a deep pressure massage or whatever. And you may be wondering, deep pressure massage for eating all the time? Yeah, because the more you can work on reducing the anxiety, the more you work on integrating the reflexes, the more you work on keeping yourselves calm, the more you work on, yes, sometimes you may need to work on going inside the mouth, but that's not the first thing that I would get into. I have a detailed course called Boost Oral Motor Fine Motor Skills. You can refer to that and it has a lot of details. But these are some general strategies that I need to start working upon, you know. And a lot of times, you know, now, and this is so easy to tell you. I mean, you know, I can just tell you, you need to calm down and don't give a lot of uh, prompts and all of it. But it's not easy, you know. Like I remember when my son was very anxious, when he was like two, two and a half, I was an anxious mother. And it was not easy for me to calm down. So engaging in activities that keep you calm, you know, a lot of activities where maybe you are engaging in, you know, exercising every day, just going for a walk every day. Because when you are calmer, whatever that your child does, that stress does not land on your body the same way. Because if you're burnt out, you're exhausted, you won't be able to help your child better. 
So my point in making this video is that I can't say that my child is eating a lot or can work on interoception alone. No. Work on only primitive reflexes. No. It's never working on one thing in isolation. It's always a combination. You know, body is so complex. You can't just do one thing and everything is done and sorted. If it was that simple, <laughs> it wouldn't have taken... You know, it took me a lot of years to figure out things. By now, yeah, my kids are really improving. But did that mean that I just work on one thing? No, it's a combination of many things. And that awareness, that understanding, when you go from there, you will definitely be able to help your child. Do kids get better? Do they stop overeating? Yes, they do. Can we work on interoceptive awareness? Yes, we can. Can we integrate primitive reflexes? Yes, we can. And all of that happens when you are the best therapeutic agent, when you're calm, you're available and you are regulated, you know, and then you work on all of these other things. So that's what I wanted to share. I hope this was helpful. And if you feel you want to learn more, you know, you want to get into this depths and understand this in details, they're all available in my courses, recorded courses, master classes. There's a depth of information. And you can check that on my app. And uh, that's all I wanted to share with you. So I hope this gave you some perspective on how to help your child and how to see this problem, not just from one lens, but from a holistic perspective. Thank you so much. Before you go, I wanted you to know about my app, autisminsights.com. Autism with an A-W-E. And in this app, what do you get? You get a 14-day free trial period to the foundation level. You get daily insights from my working for the last 23 years. What you see right now on YouTube, you get to meet me, hear me every day. You get my audio books, you get my recorded courses, you get my master classes. There's so much waiting for you. And I want you to experience it and, and grab that 14-day free trial for yourself.